Hello, hello. Chairperson of today's event, Dr. Shopan Devnath Sir, Honorable Research pers Resource Person, Dr. L.G. Patil Sir, to yet another interesting and enlightening e seminar organized by Icewell Tripura Forum, bearing the title Phonology of English Language and its Pedagogical Implications in the Indian Context. Phonological awareness is critical in the learning process of every individual 
It helps learning and understanding a language to its core. So without any further ado, to speak on today's topic, it's my absolute honor and privilege to invite our resource person, Dr. N.G. Patil, sir, former head of English department and coordinator of arts faculty of Anand Rao Tokte College and Research Center, Pune. Sir has completed his bachelor's from Vivekananda College, Pune, master's from Ferguson College, Pune. He has PG diploma from Central Institute of English and Foreign Languages, Hyderabad, and PhD from University of Pune. Sir has teaching experience of more than 35 years of UG and 25 years at the PG level. Sir has also worked as coordinator of IUAC. He has been member of board of studies. Is also recognized research guide for MPhil and PhD programs. He has been mentor, editor, visiting and guest faculty at various colleges. And having many research publications in his card. Apart from his huge scholastic achievements, Sir is also passionate about trekking and he has successfully conducted hundreds of tracks in the Himalayas for his college students. Sir, it's an honor to have you with us today. The mic is all yours, sir. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening to all the honorable chairperson for this uh, seminar. The master of ceremony, Ujaita. Mrs. Patriot, executive members of uh, ISPEL Tripura, the executive members of ISPEL India, patrons, president of ISPEL Tripura, scholars, and I think there are some students. Today is Technology of English and its implications in pedagogy. President of the Western English is taught as second language in India. And I think there are some And everyone knows that there are several languages across India taught as mother tongues. And the students at different levels, primary, secondary, and higher level, learn English as second language. By teaching English language and literature, one of the key areas that is neglected is the phonology. In fact, a child starts speaking first. When speaking, the pronunciation matters much. When we learn and teach English as second language, it is bound and it is necessary that due attention should be given to the teaching of phonology of English language. Many scholars, many teachers consider this as a technical subject. In fact, if people take interest, it is not so difficult. One of the complaints about the students who pass degrees in India is that they are unable to speak, they are unable to write, and if at all they speak, their pronunciation, their intonation is not appropriate. Now, as far as English is concerned, the model that we follow in India is British model. Yes, sir. As far as grammar, and phonology of English is concerned, we maintain the grammar of British English. Of course, there are different varieties, international standards of English, American English, Australian English, and other English varieties. 
Oh. It's not expected that the Indian speakers or the non-native speakers should be able to speak like the British. But it is expected that the Indians should leave behind the native pronunciation and come to the educated Indian speakers level so that the people or the speakers from one region having one native, say, influence or interference as far as phonology is concerned, should be intelligible to people from other region. And that is the problem. So, right from childhood, in the school days, phonology is to be taken care of in pedagogy of English language. As everyone knows, there are various boards in India, the state boards, the CBSE, ICSE, and there are several other boards. The policy makers of these boards make decision about which items are to be included to be taught to the students as far as English language teaching is concerned. And it is found that in India, phonology is less taken care of in many parts, many states. I came to know that Guwahati University has not given any scope for phonology. So also is the case of <coughs> phonology in India. As far as schools are concerned, different boards includes the, include the different the items that are related, the topics, the issues that are related to phonology, prosody, prosodic features, segmental and segmental features at school level, but they are less paid attention to. Now, what are the important concepts as far as phonology of English or of any language is concerned? One of the important thing is that the different issues in phonology related to different languages are basically same. For example, every language like English has a sound system. As far as sound system is concerned, there are consonants, vowels and diphthongs. Every language has. The problem is we have to identify, we have to locate which consonants are there in a particular language and which are not there in the other language and make a comparison, make a comparative analysis. The next level is, next important aspect or issue in phonology is word stress. English is the language where word stress is an important characteristic feature. So, that is to be taken care of. So it becomes necessary for the teachers in India and students in India, learners in India, that we should check whether word stress is retained or maintained in Indian languages and how to maintain or retain or learn word stress while using English language. The next important issue as far as phonology is concerned is intonation, sentence stress. When we use sentences, there, is, there are various tones <coughs> used. <coughs> and one should know which tone is to be used in which type of sentence or which kind of utterance or depending on the meaning of a sentence, whether there should be a falling, rising or fall rise or a rise fall. Because, you know, by using intonation patterns categorically, we can, or the speaker can, arrive at varied meanings. A sentence can be said in various tones, and it will have different meanings. When a teacher makes study of word stress and sentence stress, he comes to know that Word stress and sentence stress is closely linked with grammar. 
and in pedagogy of english language grammar is never disregarded so by teaching english at various levels maybe primary secondary or higher level it is necessary for the teacher of every language after you reach no grammar and phonology for that particular language a teacher of bengali should know the grammar of extensive knowledge is essential the grammar of bengali the phonology of bengali otherwise the teacher won't be a very good teacher of bengali language when teaching english it is essential it is necessary for every teacher of english in india elsewhere in the world to know about grammar of english and how it is linked to the phonology of extensive knowledge of phonology in fact if we pay very careful attention you'll see that there are limited restricted issues in phonology and as you know that one can go deep into the study of every say topic of study so similarly when we go deep into phonology of english there are several issues that come up but it is essential that at least at the surface level or to some deeper level one should have the knowledge of different issues in phonology of english language it is also necessary in indian context that the teacher must know the phonology of and the grammar of the native language because the teachers <coughs> in india teach to the students and generally it is uh, found that coming from different language backgrounds and generally it is found that the teachers and students have the same native language and it is expected in pedagogy of english that the pronunciation should be up to a particular standard up to a particular level so that the other speaker across the globe should be able to understand the speaker it is essential and it becomes rather easier for the teacher when teaching english that if he knows the phonology of the native language or language of the students and he can make a comparative analysis and then the study and teaching of phonology becomes quite easier now let us let us turn to different concepts in a little detail of course this is a vast topic there are several issues i cannot touch all the topics or all the issues in phonology but let me touch upon certain issues and try to see how we can make a comparison between the native languages and english language i'll take some of the examples from marathi bengali kok barok assamese as far as india is concerned there are four families of languages indo-aryan dravidian austroasiatic and uh, sino-tibetan so all the languages are affiliated to or attached to or they belong to the same these four families majority of the languages in india have similar phonological structure with some differences as far as english sound system is concerned the sounds of english are divided into two broad categories the consonants and vowels there are 24 consonants in english as compared to indian languages they are limited in number restricted in number whereas in indian languages there are more than 34 some in some languages there are more than 50 consonants as far as vowels are concerned there are pure vowels that is monophthongs and the complex vowels or they are called as diphthongs there are 12 pure vowels in english and eight diphthongs in english as far as marathi is concerned the same is with bengali and assamese there are 11 vowels out of these two are diphthongs it means that there are nine monophthongs 
and two diphthongs. In English, there are 12 plus 8, 20. So, if we make a careful study, we come to know that these large number of diphthongs frequently occur in different words and it becomes difficult for the Indian speakers to pronounce them as the native speakers. What does the speaker do then? When a speaker comes across a particular sound or a diphthong in English language, and if the, if the same diphthong is not available or vowel is not available in the native language, its homoorganic sound is found out by the speaker and it is either reduced or some other nearby vowel, <laughs> uh, similar vowel is used. For example, a is a vowel in British English which is absent in a lot of Indian languages. It becomes difficult for the Indian speakers generally who are uneducated speakers to pronounce those words because you know uneducated uh, speakers in India or uneducated people in India also use a lot of words of English in the native language. So it becomes um, difficult for them to pronounce such a word having a. But nowadays it is the practice of the Indian learners right from the childhood that in the schools they are taught and so it becomes easier. When I talk to so many teachers and ask them about vowels, how many vowels are there? The interesting answer is there are five vowels in English. And when I ask, what are they? They say A, E, I, O, U. This is an interesting answer. Actually, A, E, I, O, U are not vowels. They are letters and these are the letters that are used in spelling the words and they represent different vowels in English language. This important fact is never taught to the learners or students. As you know that one of the important characteristic features of English is that whatever the speakers say they do not write and whatever they write, they do not speak. That is why the letters and sounds do not correlate or correspond. Whereas languages like Sanskrit or Indian languages are taken, whatever we say, we go on writing. So there is a correspondence between the sounds and the letters of the script. Whereas in English, it is not so. So in English, there are two scripts. One is for spelling, one, uh, two alphabets. One is spelling alphabet, which is popularly known from A to Z, whereas the other alphabet is phonetic alphabet. Phonetic alphabet is used in dictionaries for showing or indicating transcription or exact pronunciation. The moment you open a good dictionary, like Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary, Nowadays, mobile apps are available and it is essential for the teachers to download these apps as well as suggest the students to download the apps. Where there is one option where you can listen the exact British pronunciation of the concerned word. Similarly, if you take printed dictionary, you'll see that the first entry of the word is its spelling. Immediately, you'll notice that there is stress marked and the stress is marked by a vertical bar above and before the level to which it refers. Then after the word, the next entry is written in slanting lines. Phonemic or phonetic transcription is written in slanting lines. And that transcription is given by using phonetic alphabet. There is an International Phonetic Association alphabet, IPA symbols are used, which represent different sounds in different languages, including English language. So 
the moment you open the dictionary, you come across the pronunciation, exact pronunciation. It is essential for all the teachers because we are all conscious teachers and we should be very careful while teaching in the classroom. And of course, when we come across a, a, a difficulty in pronunciation or a problem in pronunciation or sometimes students or some other people pronounce it differently and we have to check with ourselves or with someone else where, who is correct or which pronunciation is correct. We should form the habit of looking into a good dictionary for correct pronunciation. Interesting uh, example, there are several examples. Interesting example is the word computer, C-O-M-P-U-T-E-R. I came to know in my college, I talked to so many students and uh, I collected the data and the pronunciations, varied pronunciations of computer are computer, 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 computer. Several pronunciations are there. Even the teachers, even the scholars, even the solvers also mispronounce. So what is the correct or right pronunciation? And we should check into dictionary and suggest it or say uh, guide the other people or to inform the other people about the proper pronunciation. So, so it is the duty of the teacher to uh, teach the students the page pronunciation of every word but forming a good habit for uh, checking the pronunciation is very important in 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 bilingual dictionary there are a lot of bilingual dictionaries in india standard dictionaries also the transcription is given in the native language and that also helps a lot so it is essential that it should be a proper dictionary, it should be standard, it should be appropriate one, one should check it. As far as sounds are concerned, we can make a comparison while teaching in the classroom. And the consonants are in English, perver, turder, kerger, churger, fervor, herder, serza, sherger, er, mananga, le, re, ye, wo. These are the consonants in English. At higher level, how they are pronounced, how they are grouped together according to the place and manner of articulation. Which consonants are voiceless and which are voiced and what is meant by voicing and devoicing or not voicing. All these details are given in the syllabus. Every good teacher of language should know all these. I've seen that there are a lot of teachers of English literature, but there are very few teachers of English language. Criticism is also another area which is less paid attention to by the teachers in India, language teachers, particularly English language teachers in India. Both the topics are essential, indispensable and necessary for us. As far as vowels, now you can check with uh, the local language. For example, if you take the case of uh, Kok Barok, we'll see that in Kok Barok language, per per ba, these are bilabial, per is present in or available in English language as well as in Kok Barok, so also in several other Indian languages. One of the important aspects of Indian language is, this, is that there is aspiration of certain sounds. The next sound that comes in this particular hierarchy in Indian languages, for example, in Marathi or Bengali or Assam is The first one and second one. You'll see that first is unaspirated, second is aspirated. So these aspirated sounds are more in number in Indian languages, which are not there in British language or British English, which are not there in English language. There are only three aspirated sounds in English, p, t, and k. But these three aspirated sounds are not different consonants. These are the same consonants and the variants of the same consonants. Whereas the Indian English or Indian languages, 
Indian languages, the unaspirated and aspirated variants are different phoneme sounds, different sounds, different consonants. They're treated as different consonants. So in Cock Baroque, p, p, b, but b is absent. Aspirated b is absent. T, t, d, aspirated d is absent. Ch, ch, j, j, aspirated j is absent. K, k, g, but aspirated g is absent. So k and k, k is unaspirated, k is aspirated. So these two sounds are available, but g and g, g is absent in Kokborok. When you take the case of Indian languages like Marathi, Gujarati, or say Bengali and Assamese, aspirated variants are there for g, g also, k also, d also. So these are some of the features. And so while teaching the students of Tripura, it is essential for the teachers in Tripura to make a comparison between the consonant system in Tripura or Kok Barok and English language. Similarly, one can make a comparison between the vowels of English and vowels of or vowels of any other language or native language, that is, uh, the language of the students or learners. As I told you, there are 11 vowels in Marathi, so also is the case in uh, Gujarati or other languages with some differences. Whereas in English, there are 12 pure vowels. One of the interesting facts about English is that there are three varieties of a, uh, whereas in Indian languages there is just one a. Uh. Now it becomes very difficult for uh, the speakers of India, speakers from India, to make the difference between the use of these three vowels in different situations. And so naturally, because they know only one vowel, a, uh, that is true. They tend to reduce the three vowels to properly taught them the exact, correct, right pronunciation at the early stage. The a uh, as in cut, but a uh, as in account, or the third variety, a, uh, that is long a, uh, as in serve, nerve. But the people or the speakers who do not know these variants, they will say serve, nerve. Yes, sir. So it is the duty of the teacher to point out these mistakes or these differences so that the, the, the speech of the speaker becomes rather effective. The 12 pivot vowels in British English are E, E, short E, long E, both are available in Indian languages also. A, which is also available in most of the languages. A, which is absent in Indian languages, but still the Indians have no difficulty in pronouncing A. A again is, is, is available, but A in Indian languages is comparatively short vowel, whereas in English it is comparatively long vowel. A, hard, fast, last. And those who do not know this difference between long and short, they will say last. Is, is, is I thought hard, in the this. Last and hard. Last and last. This is how the problems arise in pronunciation. There is O and O in British English. The next two vowels, O and O. A, O, O are open vowels. Open in the sense that while pronouncing these vowels, mouth is open. So, O and O are available in Indian languages also. The next two are O and O, short O and long O. And there is no difficulty for the Indian speakers and for the teachers also. The problem is with the three varieties of O. Three vowels, uh, which are central vowels, a, uh, a, uh, and a. Uh. And the difference between these, or among these vowels, is to be identified and that is to be uh, used.
used properly in the relative words or say constructive words. As far as diphthongs are concerned, there are eight diphthongs in Indian languages. There are two or three diphthongs in some languages. That there are three. We are a and o. For example, in Marathi, the two diphthongs are i and au, i and au. Whereas in northeastern languages, we is one of the prominent diphthongs. Whereas the other diphthongs are absent. The eight diphthongs are classified as three diphthongs ending in e, two diphthongs ending in u, and three diphthongs ending in u. The three diphthongs ending in e are a, i, and oi. Two diphthongs ending in u are o and au, home, phone, not phone. Now what happens is that in Indian languages, o is o, a, and u. You know, definition of diphthong is a warm within the same syllable. It is a glide from the position of one vowel in the direction of the next vowel. So in O, the glide begins from O and moves in the direction of U. So when the word home, H-O-M-E, is pronounced, the British speakers or the native speakers pronounce it as home, home. Whereas Indians reduce it to O because O is difficult for the Indian speakers. So they reduce it and they use the similar sound or closer sound and that is O. So home, they will say home. So this minor difference, in fact it's not a minor but it's a major difference, is to be identified by the learner as well as the teacher. So that's why the uh, uh, forming of habit of using a good dictionary for pronunciation is essential. The three diphthongs ending in E are A, I, and fine, for example, A, say, day, Thursday. We say Thursday, Sunday, not Sunday. It is Sunday, day. So these uh, pronunciation differences or differences in pronunciation are to be And this helps to alleviate uh, the, the quality the three diphthongs ending in a uh, are a, uh, uh, ear, and ear. Ear as in ear, near, etc. Tear, fear. There are several examples, and these are frequently used. Vowels are frequently used. And there are 20, in fact, monophthongs and diphthongs together, vowels together, so it is necessary. Ear, air. Air, fair, near, hair, etc. And poor, 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 etc. So, <coughs> the knowledge of diphthongs is essential for the as well as the in So, these are to be included by the, the board uh, of studies in, in, in different universities and schools and, uh, at various levels. The next important concept in phonology is word stress. This is an important characteristic feature of English language, which is not there in Indian languages. In Indian languages, words are never stressed. That is, words are made of syllables. Words can have one or many syllables. There may be two, three, four. If there are two or more than two syllables, not all the syllables are equally prominent in native English speech. One of them, either the first or second, is given more prominence than the other. And so, the word stress as a pattern, as, as a system, becomes an important characteristic feature of English language. These are all characteristic features of a particular language like English. So similarly, every language has its own characteristic features. As for a syntactic pattern, morphology, or phonetic systems, and every language has its own characteristic features. And because we are the masters of a particular language, we should acquire mastery over it. So, word stress is an important feature of English language. 
and it is essential for the teacher to teach all this. So the words like Sunday, the stress is on Sunday, first syllable, Sunday, table, English, answer. So the stress is on the first syllable. If you take a word like syllable, the stress is on the second syllable, the word, the, the sound la, syllable, not syllable, not English, not English, but English. Answer, not answer, not answer, not even answer, that is level tone. In Indian languages, level tone is maintained as far as word stress is concerned. So there is no concept of tone, uh, stress or accent, word accent in Indian languages. So uh, when the Indians speak, they do not use words, uh, they do not speak words as per the uh, say stress pattern. And you know that uh, which words are to be stressed? The content words, the content words in English are to be stressed. And the content words are nouns, all the nouns, all the verbs, all the adverbs and adjectives are to be stressed. Whereas some other words like some pronouns, for example, demonstrative or interrogative pronouns are sometimes, depending on the context, depending on the meaning, they are stressed. Otherwise, they are not stressed. Now, the question is, which syllable is to be stressed? And you know that syllable is an another is is one of the important concepts in in every language, of course, and it is important in a language where stress pattern occurs. Syllable is in it of utterance in a word. The word can have one syllable or several syllables. And syllable is made of one vowel and plus or minus consonants preceding or following. So the central sound in a syllable is vowel or diphthong. In syllable or syllabification, diphthongs are treated as vowels. So when we take the word like English, in is one syllable, lish is another syllable. So these are to be separately pronounced. A slight gap is there between the two parts of the word that is two syllables. And the one one of them is more prominent, more important, it is rest than the other. So in this word, English, ing is to be stressed. Now, why ing is to be stressed? Now, why not lish? The answer goes back to the nature of English. Because the languages come out of the experience or use of the people or the users in society or community. Language is used by human beings and in community or society. And languages grow and develop. Mm -hmm. Change their features. Mm -hmm. So similarly, when English came into say, existence, English acquired its own characteristics from the Indo-Saxon and Indo the Indo languages. And this is for video. <coughs> we have to ask the native speaker. It's not okay. possible okay. for everyone to go offline. Okay. The native speaker and ask him which syllable is stressed. So dictionary is and a lot of apps, dictionary apps are essential. And they are helping guides for us to see which level is to be stressed. So in this way, Syllable, uh, sorry, stress or accent, word stress or word accent is an important feature. There are a lot of words in English which are used as either verb or, uh, sorry, subject, uh, verb or, say, a uh, noun or adjective. For example, the words like present and present. Ten boys were present, present in the classroom. I presented him with. So, in the first sentence, present is noun. In the second sentence, the word present is used as verb. Now, when there are a lot of words in English which are used either as 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 verbs or nouns, same word, but the pronunciation is different. The word stress is different. If the word is used as noun, the stress is on the first level. 
if the word is used as a verb the stress is on the second syllable and most of these words are bisyllabic bi means two two syllable disyllabic you can say disyllabic monosyllabic disyllabic and polysyllabic words so in disyllabic words we see that there are a lot of words which are used as nouns or verbs and sometimes adjectives if the word is used as adjective the stress is on the first syllable for example subject and subject so if stress changes sometimes the pronunciation also changes present and present when you use it as verb the pronunciation is present present pre and when you use it as subject or uh, say uh, subject it is sorry present it becomes pre present and present so this is how there is a change in the pronunciation of the word also one of the important uh, issues uh, at the low level is pronunciation of the words and words are made of syllables and syllables are made of sounds and you can have uh, the occurrence of sounds in any way there may be a consonant or two consonants or zero consonant then a vowel and then a consonant or no vowel no consonant at all or say two or three consonants for example if you take the word like street this word street is made of sir plus ter plus r plus e plus t so before a vowel there are three consonants and it uh, the word ends with a consonant so c c c v c is the structure of the syllable of this word now when words come sorry sounds come together the words are to be pronounced properly as i told you in the beginning that there is no correlation between the letters and phonology of english language hello uh, patriot am i audible yes sir you are audible uh-huh. only the uh, video has gone off no problem sir carry on carry on fine please carry on sir from your other device we can uh, most probably hear you hello yes, yes sir uh, you are audible you just carry on problem <laughs> technical problem please carry on sir, sir. Uh, there are different spellings for the same sound for ch for example ch is a sound the spelling may be c c c c h c k sometimes t c h etc so how if if the varied spelling comes occurs a student is confused what is the exact pronunciation let us take the word p e d a g o g y this word pedagogy is many times pronounced as pedagogy by a lot of students so what is the correct pronunciation so for that again looking into a good dictionary is necessary teacher uh, is is uh, expected to present himself as a good model for the students now let us go to the next super segment next level uh, patriot how many minutes are for there for me how long can i go hello ma'am yes sir uh it's uh, 7:50 now uh, you could take a, uh, if you are you know comfortable another 10 minutes sir yeah yeah because i should not exceed time <laughs> i should not take your time unnecessarily it is it is uh, quite interesting sir to listen to you you generally say that a teacher when starts speaking he, he stops speaking when there is a bell <laughs> when the bell rings okay, and there is sir. no bell for us so you work as a bell for me okay <laughs> anyway so uh, the next is uh, the the sentence stress or super segment as far as super segment features are concerned so sentence stress or intonation it is uh, said that english is a stress timed language that is when words occur in sentences the stressed syllables occur at a regular interval of time so the time taken to travel 
from one stress level to the next stress level in the same sentence is roughly the same. Roughly the same. That is why we see that there is stress uh, that is vehemence on, on one level and there is a glide on the next intervening levels and then again there is uh, stress on the next stress level. So in this way there is up and down in the speech or pronunciation of the British people. That is why we see that when British people speak, what are you doing? They will say, what are you doing? Whereas Indian speakers say, what are you doing? Because in Indian languages, level tone is maintained at sentence uh, level also. Of course, in Indian English or Indian languages, to some extent, tones are maintained, tones are there. For example, if there is a question, generally rising tone is used in the native language. Of course, a uh, lot of uh, uh, very tones are used, uh, saying or laying stress or more weightage on a particular set of words is important. In order to carry the meaning, in order to carry the impact of the meaning of the words, there is no fixed theory for that. Whereas English is concerned, there is a fixed pattern. And we see that there are uh, that there is a central stress level, which is called as the key word of the sentence. The key word or the important word occurs generally at the end of the sentence. And that is generally the content word. Once again, we see that well in a sentence, which words are to be stressed? The content words are to be stressed. And the content words are nouns, verbs, adverbs, and adjectives are to be stressed. Whereas the intervening words, grammatical words like pronouns, prepositions, conjunctions, interjections are not generally stressed. And that is why when a speaker, native speaker speaks, his speech occurs like up and down. There are ups and downs. It is rhythmic. It is something like uh, musical. And so it is, uh, English is called as a rhythmical language. It is stress timed language. Now what are the sentence, uh, sorry, intonation patterns used in English language? The intonation patterns, the major two intonation patterns are falling tone and a rising tone. And the remaining two are fall, rise and rise and fall together or split. Falling tone is used in a particular types of sentences. For example, for this, we should uh, have the knowledge of different types of sentences and every teacher knows that there are a fixed number of types of sentences. These are statements and statements are divided into two broad categories, positive and negative. Whereas for, from the chronological perspective, they are, they are uh, divided as statements uh, which are emotional and statements which are not emotional. Questions, next type is there are two types of questions. One is yes, no type, verbal type of question, which begins with, have you finished? Has he gone, gone home? Are you there? Did you work properly? Did you complete your assignments? So all these are verbal questions. The other type of question is WH, which begins with WH words like what, when, why, how, whenever, whatever, whatever etc. Again, WH questions from phonological perspective uh, are grouped into two categories. One is the emotional WH question and unemotional. Many times we see that, well, the speakers while talking in a official situation, they are not emotional about, but they ask questions, uh, when did you finish this? Where is the book? Where are these papers? But sometimes a person gets emotional and says, where are the papers? So, <clears throat> intonation comes in. 
varied intonation or different intonation pattern comes in. So the glitch questions are important. So it's very easy to uh, keep in mind. I'll tell you at the end how to keep this in mind. The next type of sentence is command. And you know there are commands. The next is requests. Requests are generally emotional. And so they carry a particular type of, say, stress or intonation and exclamations, finally. There are two types of intonation patterns. One is falling tone and rising tone. When you use a statement without any emotional implication, falling tone is used. I have a lot of students. He is a teacher. He is a teacher. The falling tone is on teacher. The last important word carries the intonation. The golden rule is last important, generally, generally, last important word carries this uh, intonation. Of course, the speaker can lay stress on any other word depending on the implied meaning or expected meaning. For example, Yesterday, I went to Mumbai. If I lay stress on yesterday, yesterday, I went to Mumbai. So I'm talking about the time, the date, not two days back. This way, I went to Mumbai. Now, I, the word I is important. No one else, my friend, not my friend or my brother or not, someone else. Though I is a pronoun, it is stressed here. That is why I said that, well, uh, grammatical words are not generally pronounced, but sometimes, depending on the context, depending on the meaning, they can be stressed or they can be, uh, intonation can be used. So, yesterday, I went to Mumbai. Yesterday, I went to Mumbai. I'm talking about my going. I'm not talking about any other activity. I'm talking about my action of going over there. Yesterday, I went to Mumbai, not Chennai, not Hyderabad. So, in this way, different meanings can be arrived at by using different intonation or say, say nucleus. It is called as nucleus, making or shifting the nucleus. You can shift the nucleus to different words and make them as nucleus and bring in a desired impact. And this is done effectively in dramatics in film industry, in soap opera, where people lay stress on a particular word and that is what is important from their perspective while speaking in the context. So generally, generally, the statement carries the falling tone without any emotional implication. If the statement carry, has emotional implication, it can be said with rising tone. The questions, verbal questions, Verbal questions generally carry rising tone. Have you finished? Look at the nature of the question. You're asking a binary question. The answer is either yes or no. So, have you finished? Did he go home? Can you do this? Can you do this? So, rising tone. Can you do this? There are some people who can make the use of tones very effectively in India because uh, you know that. Well, they are, uh, what do you call it, uh, expert in, in using the pronunciations effectively. They are experts in this. In dramatics, it is necessary. And life is full of drama. So we use uh, different tones and intonation patterns uh, for bringing out the desired meaning or desired impact on the listener. When, WH, when we talk about WH questions, the WH questions without any implication, emotional implication carry the falling tone. Where is my book falling tone? But if it is said with emotion, then where is my book? How is your mother? This can be said with, uh, say, less interest, but generally it is not said with less interest. It is said with more interest or more emotion. How is your mother? How is your mother? Rising tone, mother. So in this way, rising tone or falling tone can be used in WH questions. All the commands are said with falling tone. Come here. Close the door. Open the book. Read this. Answer my question. Answer my question. 
and generally the intonation is on the, the the first word or that is the content word first content word generally most of the uh, commands come with single words or two words or less words like two or three there can be a sentence i uh, in my earlier speech i had said that well language or dialogue or speech or any 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 say linguistic content can be uh, divided into one or many sentences sentences divided into one or many clauses clauses are divided into one or many phrases phrases are divided into or they are made of one or many words words are made of one or many syllables and syllables are made of one or many sounds so in this way we, we can see that one word can be a sentence come come is an order so come can be a sentence so look at it as a sentence and so the word come or come here so you can lay stress on come or you can lay stress on here because you are talking about the place come here generally it is on stress on 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 the content word come okay. as far as requests are concerned all the requests can be rising to will you help me please don't say will you help me please help me please can you do this for me a lot of verbal questions are turned into the polite requests requests or polite requests all the requests or polite requests uh, are said with rising tone would you be kind enough to help me will all the participants go upstairs for lunch so in this way different uh, intonation patterns can be used as far as uh, question uh, as far as the question tags are concerned because you know that in english law well, we have this particular important concept of question tag question tags carry rising tone okay have you he has finished hasn't he <coughs> they have come haven't they he is a teacher isn't he so rising tone once again there is a problem with the link hello uh, it's fine sir we can That's hear you yeah. okay okay so and then last is exclamations all exclamations are expressions of emotions and so exclamations exclamations naturally carry a rising tone wow what a beautiful scene what a beautiful painting what an ex an excellent answer what a show rising tone so intonations uh, you will see that are not very difficult for teaching as well as learning or acquiring as far as english is concerned only the problem is that the use of signs or symbols or marking it on the paper as far as falling or rising tone is concerned a slanting line is used pointing downwards for falling tone a slanting line pointing upwards is used for uh, rising tone in some uh, some some books prescribe it uh, above and some books prescribe it below the word whereas fall rise is concerned the fall and rise is used with the v mark that is falling and rising sign on the syllable which is the central key or the important syllable of uh, of that particular say uh, tone or intonation group of intonation a tone group it is called a tone group technically it is tone group uh, i have tried to bring it out of knowledge out of some technical terms otherwise it can be taught through entirely technical terms also but i have used other terms parallel terms for uh, different concepts in phonology uh, phone rise is concerned for example she is beautiful beautiful falling plus rising when you say she is beautiful it means that you want to say something and she is beautiful but but her behavior is rather in question so in this way in order to bring out a, a an implied meaning categorically falling rising or rising and falling can be used effectively you see that uh, in incomplete utterances incomplete utterances means in a sentence there may be two clauses now we are talking about so far single sentences that is sentence with single clause 
There can be sentences with two clauses, three clauses, four clauses. If there are two clauses, the sentence or the meaning is complete after the second clause. So the meaning in the first clause is generally incomplete. Okay. I went to see him, but he was not at home. I went to see him is one sentence, one clause. He was not at home uh, is another sentence, another clause. And I went to see him, but he was not at home is one sentence. In this one sentence, there are two clauses. The meaning of the entire sentence is complete when the second clause is complete. So in such sentences, the first clause is incomplete from the point of view of meaning. So rising tone is used. So some people sometimes use single clause in a sentence and use rising tone. He was not at home. It means that and, and, and the listeners are eager to listen what he is going to say next because the tone suggests that he is going to say something else and he has nothing to say. So the speaker should use it very effectively or appropriately. If there are two clauses, then first clause carries the rising tone. I was about to talk to him, but he suggested me a different answer. I was about to talk to him, him. The meaning is incomplete. The clause is complete. The syntactic pattern structure is complete, but the meaning is incomplete. Something else is due to come. And so when next clause comes, you should use falling tone. Okay. So in this way, uh, of course, if there are three clauses, again, first will carry rising tone, second will carry rising tone, and the last will carry falling tone. If there are four clauses, it's possible that a speaker may use four clauses. There are some speakers who use clauses after clauses after clauses, and very effective speakers are there. So all the intermittent, uh, intermittent or intermittent clauses within a sentence will carry rising tone, and the last clause will carry falling tone. Students should practice this. And teachers should have this particular data available with them. And a lot of sentences, a lot of words, a lot of sounds with varied, say, uh, varied sounds, different sounds and different syllables can be grouped together. And the sets can be prepared and this can be taught very effectively. Now, for teaching all this, certain books are essential. And in India, a lot of study as far as Indian English is concerned and phonology of Indian standard Indian English or Indian English was done in CIFL. Nowadays, it is called as FLU. And the great scholars like Prabhakar, Prabhakar Babu, T. Balasubramaniam, Bansal, Harrison, Parashar, uh, and, and so many, uh, Dhamija and Sethi, coming from different states of India, who are great scholars, who were great scholars of English language. And they came to CIFL and they started taking projects to talk about the phonology of English or stress pattern or intonation patterns of Indian English. And they, they made the study of the native languages and they came out with their own research projects. One can visit those research projects and some of them came with books. For example, T. Balasubramaniam came out with a very famous book. It is prescribed in almost all the universities of India, a textbook of English phonetics for India by T. Balasubramaniam. I was uh, lucky enough to be the student of him and uh, we had certain projects uh, for uh, All India Radio Hyderabad while I was staying there. The next one is a very important book, very simple, by Bunsel and Harrison, Spoken English. This is a very good book. There is a lot of practice. So all the students and teachers can have this book and can use this book. Uh, in Tripura University, it is not used in the syllabus. The book from England is by Daniel Jones. And Daniel Jones says the pronunciation of English is a very important book which gives you the the basics of the exact, say, no, notions of uh, pronunciation of English language uh, as far as British English is concerned. There is, again, a very good book with a lot of exercise. There, of course, students need a lot of exercise. Teachers, teachers are monitors, guides, 
uh, and and so many uh, adjectives can be used or, or for the teachers nouns can be used for the teachers so teacher a good teacher is a teacher who gives a lot of skill drill or a lot of practice to the students a lot of assignments to the students and this book by j sethi and damija again these were my teachers j sethi and damija p d damija a course in practical uh, a course in phonetics and spoken english a course in phonetics and spoken english which gives you a lot of practical uh, say exercises and this can be used of course peter roach's uh, english phonetics and phonology can be used of course these are the books coming from england and there are different kinds of dictionaries every college should have every teacher of english should have this dictionary english pronunciation dictionary this will give you the two kinds of pronunciations across the globe and that is british pronunciation and american pronunciation you know uh, there is no meaning given in this dictionary only pronunciation and all the details about the pronunciation and variants or varieties of the pronunciation of certain sounds or words or stress pattern and british and american pronunciation is given of course uh, of course the oxford dictionary also uh, notifies british as well as american pronunciation you know british and uh, american uh, english differs from british english in pronunciation second in lexicology certain words are different and some grammatical rules are variant so they will say la last not last they will say fast not fast so some some of such differences can be identified of course there is a difference in certain uh, use of certain vowels so these can be Located. Of course, there are a lot of uh, say reading materials prepared by concerned universities. So, when the university scholars or in board of members or uh, people in the boards prescribe a particular topic, they generally think of which reading materials are to be prescribed, and so they uh, the experts in the university prepare certain materials. But these are some of the books. There is one very important book and very good book by Peter Lady Forget. peter lady forget a practical course in phonetics a practical course in phonetics it's very good book in interest but not for ug students spoken english by bansal and harrison is very good book for the beginners because there are a lot of examples lot of charts and diagrams are given now i talked about phonology of english and one can think of phonetics phonetics is a general topic it is study of how human beings are able to pronounce the sounds produce the sounds the moment we want to speak or say something idea is conceived in the brain the nervous system the message linguistic message is carried to the nervous system to the relative organs the lungs work start working the muscles compress or expand the lungs the air is taken in part of the air is pushed here in the vocal cords in case of certain sounds the vocal cords do not vibrate whereas in the case of many sounds vocal cords vibrate the air comes into the mouth and the mouth articulates organs in mouth lips teeth tongue different parts of the tongue articulate the sounds and oral or nasal or nasalized sounds are produced so this is what happens in case of every normal speaker across the globe the same apparatus same speech mechanism same nervous system is used only the thing is that articulation the organization of sounds in a particular language varies from organization of sounds in the other language now there are a lot of issues that can be covered but in pedagogy of uh, english language certainly phonology and the study of phonology plays a very significant role as you know once again let me tell you that there are so many languages in india and it becomes very difficult for the people to uh, be intelligible to to other people or the speak particularly the foreign listeners the british uh, speakers complain that or british people complain that a lot of indians 
uh, are unintelligible and that is the, the problem is because of phonology and uh, their pronunciations are uh, deeply rooted in native languages it is called as language uh, say convergence or language influence interference of language interference of mother tongue over the other tongue so we should take care of that and we should come at a particular level where we can be intelligible to the others so with these words let me end my uh, speech so i thank the organizers i thank the executive members of ispel india and the president and chairperson and the members of ispel pro forum i thank uh, patricia madam for uh, giving me i thank everyone in the, in the in the organizing committee for giving me a chance to speak at this on this forum uh, finally let me thank all the listeners uh, because uh, listeners are very important and uh, it is my urgent request that you should not uh, pay less attention to phonology take it rather uh, of course happily interesting it is quite interesting a lot of students say to me that sir it is interesting it is interesting no doubt now interesting means that you are developing a positive attitude so develop a positive attitude to grammar of english and phonology and of course criticism because i am teacher of criticism also and i see that well a lot of universities do not prescribe syllabus in criticism a lot of teachers also say that they teach literature but they do not want to teach criticism they know nothing about criticism and it is fun that how can you teach literature without criticism similarly it is funny to say that we can teach language without the knowledge of uh, phonology that is that is that is a strange thing so we should have the knowledge of phonology thank you thank you one and all and i wish you all a very happy a new year thank you ma'am uh thank you so much sir for your wonderful deliberation we were glued to your lecture throughout uh now i would like to request our esteemed uh, participants uh if they have any queries or any question to ask our resource person they can turn on the mic and put up their question directly to sir yes, if there is any yeah. if there is any query or questions to ask to him uh, you may proceed if there is or you can the write chat box, in, in the chat box read in the chat from the chat box yes 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 sure sir yes. someone says that when phonology is neglected area in our syllabi so that is that is the case that is the reality and remember that comparative approach is essential so we should know the phonology of our mother tongue because we are the teachers of language first and english language next okay do you agree with this view yes completely sir yes sir so yes, we should know okay. what is the phonology of our language and the second language a comparative approach is quite easier one interesting one you can prepare papers and you can take projects also to talk about the phonological features of uh, native language your native language or even dialect also in dialectal uh, say uh, varieties of the same language you can come across a lot of differences or a lot of peculiarities in uh, pronunciation you can write papers or uh, someone can take certain projects at say a phd level also because these people the meja sethi the meja and sethi they were from i think gujarat and rajasthan parashar is also from uh, i think uh, one of them was from bengal and kelkar was from maharashtra so he talked about marathi phonology of marathi and he is he is the leader in a leading scholar in in phonology of marathi so he worked in cfl uh, sorry he worked in deccan college not cfl deccan college pune any question uh, 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 good good evening sir yes uh, sir i am uh, shrujit rai from assam yes uh, nice to see you uh, thank you sir it is very great uh, for me to visit uh, to see you on uh, on the digital platform after uh, after almost two decades yes. uh, sir as uh, today uh, i would like to share my bitter experience Yes. Uh, so after doing my MPhil and PhD in ELT from EFL University, yes. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, then when I appeared for interview in college uh, for uh, for the post of English in the College of Assam, mm-hmm. I was summarily rejected by these <laughs> by the uh, uh, experts in the interview committee mm-hmm. uh, because my papers are in language. Uh, because uh, that was on teacher education or in other, uh, on the language of uh, Shakespearean language. So I had my papers on that. Yes. And they mentioned, I said, why? They said, this, we need literature teacher. But I questioned, the yeah. advertisement is for only English. We are, uh, posts were advertised for the post of English, uh, for the senior professor of English. I said, there's no mention of literature. Because I will be teaching grammar there also language literature also. Mm-hmm. But I was rejected simply because my papers are in, in language. And, um, and not... Yeah, no, uh, you are not audible, Surajit. Uh, Surajit. Sorry, uh, in one place, in several places, uh, by these uh, experts of uh, certain uh, one university, that I, don't, I don't want to take a name, I don't want to take the name of the university, but the premier institute, university of Northeast. So luckily, I was uh, selected by some. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes oh, it happens. Uh, 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 is it audible now? Selectors. Hello. So, experts in. Hello. The, yeah. Hello. Oh, sir, network problem, sir. Network problem is here. Okay, yes. you can say something. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Shurjit. Uh, uh, yes, uh, wonderful question. And now okay. let's move on to the next yes. question. Hello. Because of time, we have to move on to the next question. Um, Shamulima Saikia, uh, I hope I pronounced it correctly. Uh, mm-hmm. Sir, what kind of projects related to phonetics can be given to the undergraduate students? Yeah, of course, these projects, projects in the sense, uh, I mean, whether assignments, short assignments or longer assignments, normally you can you can assign uh, any project in, say, uh, consonants or vowels or diphthongs uh, and, and, uh, or word stress or intonation as far as longer projects are concerned. As far as shorter projects are concerned, you can give them a list of words, for example, 20 words. This was the practice in CIFL also, FLU also. We used to give the list of words and ask the students to transcribe them phonemically. In the beginning, give them shorter words, words with a limited number of sounds, then go for the medium level words and then go for the higher level words. So you can in the beginning start with monosyllabic words and then disyllabic and then trisyllabic. Ask them to uh, put stress or mark stress after teaching the theory of word stress. So give them a list of 20 words every day, 10 words every day, and ask them to come with. Or you can ask them to uh, send uh, images on your app or on on, on, on phone. So uh, it's not necessary that teachers should check everything every day, but if you give, give them a lot of assignments and uh, well, monitor them, you can. Of course, you can ask them to write, uh, you can write sentences or give them sentences, ask them to transcribe them or mark intonation, mark stress. So uh, in other way, uh, as far as speech is concerned, you can give them certain sentences in pairs, ask them to use intonation while communicating as far as conversation or dialogues are concerned. So ask them to pronounce the words or sentences in a varied way. Okay, so these projects can okay, be... Sir. Longer projects also can be given. And at PG level, you can ask the students to identify some of the different sounds which are not in the native language. I mean, they are not uh, recorded in the, in the theory of native language, but they are used differently or say uh, in, in dialectal variation. You can make a, a study of that also. That can be another project for PG students or TY or final year students. Yes, okay, please. sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I hope uh, there is Hello, everyone. question. Yes. Okay, okay. Yes, another please. question is there. Please go ahead. 
uh, I want to share something. When I was studying in FY, that time I came to know there are 12 pure vowels. And from my school, I have learned that there are only five vowels in English language. That time I thought, oh my God, I was learned all the wrong English. Yeah, that is the different approach taken because people generally at lower level think that it should be treated as easily. The approach is different. Okay. So only one thing is missed from their teaching that these are the few letters used for spelling which represent all the vowels. But they are not vowels. But they represent all the 12 pure vowels and diphthongs. Anyway, that is the common experience of Indians uh, in uh, yeah, we are not very careful. The board, as Surjit said that, this is the problem with even selectors. Any teacher of language can teach literature, but the teacher of literature only, for teacher of literature, it becomes difficult to teach language or linguistics. So that is the reality. Any teacher of language or who has got extensive knowledge in language studies can teach literature, no problem at all. He can come out with nuances of phonology or nuances of uh, syntax, grammar, of poetry and etc. Uh, so that is how it helps. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, extensive knowledge of phonology helps you to identify or place any speaker. Identify any speaker. So your role is like Professor Higgins. Do you remember Professor Higgins, the character from George Bernard Shaw's a famous play, Pygmalion. Professor Regins is a central character and he is the expert of phonology and phonetics. And so he is able to place any person in any from any region of England. So you can he, he could say he has come from so and so, he has come from this state or this place or this area, this region, etc. So phonology gives you this scope to identify uh, from the speech the the place of the speaker, the region of the speaker. Yes. Yes, please. Okay, sir. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, it was really an, a wonderful session. Uh, so let's move on to the next part of our today's session. Uh, I would like to take up the opportunity to introduce our respected chairperson of today's event, Dr. Shopun Devnath Sir. Sir is an alumni of MBB College and Tripura University. He was awarded PhD degree in linguistics by Tripura University in the year 2011. Presently, he is serving in the prestigious Ramakrishna Mission Vidyalaya Vivek Nagar as postgraduate teacher, and also he's involved in doing individual research in linguistics and literature. Sir has published renowned journals, research papers, and he has many books in his cart. Sir, it's my honor to invite you to speak up on this occasion. Shopun sir, the mic is yours. Okay, good evening, uh, everybody. Um, good actually, evening, this is a wonderful opportunity to uh, listen to uh, Sir, our special person, Sir. And uh, the way he presented and the way he so simply analyzed the phonology of English and uh, the way it is to be uh, implemented as far as um, Indian students are concerned. Uh, so it is uh, really a treat uh, for us, uh, particularly for me as a student of linguistics. And um, the, the most important thing uh, to me, um, which uh, uh, I am very much attracted towards uh, the presentation of uh, our issue person today, uh, is uh, uh, how to uh, pedagogically implement it, uh, uh, the phonology of English, whereas uh, we go for multilingual classroom. And uh, the simplest way suggested by Sir is uh, to um, uh, go for comparison. The, you know, there is uh, the set of uh, sounds uh, selected by English and the set of sounds uh, selected by um, particularly Kogbarok and uh, Bangla, particularly Tripura Bangla and the uh, different dialectal variations also. So but it is uh, really very essential uh, uh, to go for um, the differences of sound patterns um, of different uh, languages uh, with English. 
and uh, how to tackle the missing sounds uh, in uh, our mother tongue, particularly uh, so many sounds are there in English, so many sounds are not there in our mother tongue. So uh, in the, the students or the speakers uh, uh, of a language, they just go for the nearby sound and they uh, go for pronouncing the <clears throat> English language. As for example, in uh, Kogbarak, particularly um, the fricative wa is not there and they go for bo inst uh, instead of um, uh, in place of English wo. So um, actually, um, if I say in Bangla also, uh, suppose Ami Bharat Bashi, um, the Kogborak speaker will go for Ami Bharat Bashi. So uh, wo becomes uh, bo. So they replace wo sound with bo sound. So as a result, when they speak English, so uh, they go for the same pattern. So as a teacher, um, of uh, then uh, we should go for identifying those things and uh, go for drilling them. So it is um, a wonderful way suggested by our research person. And uh, another thing is there, I want to add one thing uh, in Kogborak particularly, as I have a uh, little observation in Kogborak. In Kogborak, uh, you know, uh, there are five uh, uh, vowel system and 10 diphthongs. And uh, uh, this uh, can be <laughs> divided into two one uh, two divisions, less productive and productive. Mm -hmm. In Kogborok, particularly uh, for the teachers, I want to say uh, is that uh, uh, there is <clears throat> in Kogborok uh, three diphthongs are three diphthongs are very prominent. One is I am telling you <coughs> three diphthongs: ui, i, and oi. Oi, yes. And, uh, these three uh, uh, diphthongs are very prominent, and the teachers uh, and students are so also there from the community, particularly the uh, Kogborok speaking community. So if they can listen to that, uh, we, I, and OE, uh, these three diphthongs are very prominent. And uh, where is uh, ya, o, uh, o, 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 e, o, e? These uh, diphthongs are less productive. And uh, my survey of nearly uh, 2,200 uh, data uh, that proved that uh, these three, if we go for drilling uh, for three diphthongs, we, I, and OA, we can uh, particularly up to class 12 level or up to, uh, you know, EG level, we can uh, tackle the problems uh, related to English diphthongs and uh, Cogbrook uh, diphthongs. So this is one observation I wanted to add. And uh, the rest of the things uh, suggested by uh, our reviewers sir, uh, is a wonderful one. And uh, the topic chosen today, it is uh, really very vast. And uh, it requires a lot of classes and um, okay. particularly it's touched all the, you know, almost all the major areas. One area may take one month or two months together. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope uh, in near future such kind of uh, webinar um, webinar, seminar or this, uh, on phonology, particularly in English phonology in Indian context. And if possible, uh, I would like to request the uh, organizers to go for um, phonology of English in, uh, in particularly in uh, Tripura level, particularly. If can be organized locally, then uh, I, I hope uh, the students of Tripura and the teachers of Tripura alike, they will be benefited. So that's it uh, from my side. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, your observation is very good. In fact, this is necessary for all the teachers that they should know about the native. And uh, as you suggested that, well, uh, if uh, several seminars can be organized, because uh, so many seminars were organized during pandemic uh, online. And uh, I saw that uh, there were a handful of just, handful of uh, say, seminars, almost nil. None of them dealt with uh, phonology of English, which is very important aspect of it. So teachers will become aware of it, conscious of it, by teaching English language. Because when we teach English language, this is very important aspect of English language, which is uh, less paid attention to. So thank you, sir. Thank you, Sapun Dev Devnath, sir. Thank you uh, once again, uh, Pujita Nath, and Patriot, and all the scholars and the listeners. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Shopan Devnat, sir, for your wonderful observation. Uh, now I would like to request respected Ms. Patriot Deborma, ma'am, uh, 
uh, assistant professor in Ataji Shubhash Mahavidalaya to present the certificates to the participants. Ma'am. Thank you very much, Pujaita. Uh, now to do the honors, I would uh, like to share my screen. Please give me some time. Okay. Uh, so uh, today we have been truly enlightened by our resource person's uh, deliberation. And it was a talk which was quite uh, elaborative and uh, very, very uh, beneficial for most of us uh, students as well as teachers, you know, how to understand the phonology of English language as well as related to our own native languages. Thank you very much, sir. And in order to uh, express our appreciation for your uh, wonderful endeavor, we would like to honor you with this certificate, sir, from ISPEL Tripura Forum. Thank you, ma'am for being our resource person for today's e-seminar on phonology of English language and its pedagogical implications in Indian context. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Next, uh, I would also like to take this opportunity to thank our chairperson for today's event, Dr. Shopan Devnath, who has also uh, enlightened us by sharing his observations as well as uh, suggesting some uh, uh, nuances in the language and uh, basically through the comparative analysis of Kogborok uh, uh, phonology and we thank you so much sir for giving your time and acting as the chairperson of today's e-seminar on phonology of English language and its pedagogical implications in Indian context. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. And uh, last but not least, I would like to thank Ms. Pujoita Nag, uh, who, is, who has been, in fact, uh, uh, very uh, wonderful in trying to sail this ship of today's event by being the master of ceremonies in today's e-seminar on phonology of English language and its pedagogical implications in Indian context. I thank Ms. Pujaita Nag, who is also- Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, it's okay. an honor. Uh, I thank uh, Pujaita, who is also uh, you know, a student of uh, Ahmed, and uh, she also has passion for creative writing. And therefore, I hope that we would also get her uh, expertise and her knowledge in our future endeavors of the forum. Wish you all the best and keep sailing us through till the end of this online event. Thank you, ma'am. Therefore, now I would like to uh, hand over this uh, session once again to Pujaita Nag, who is the Master of Ceremonies for today's event. Please take it from here, Pujaita. Sure, ma'am. Uh, as we reach towards the end of our today's uh, wonderful session, I would like to uh, thank each one of you for your kind presence. Uh, now, I would like to invite our honorable president of Icefell Tripura Forum, Dr. Shrujit Sen, uh, sir, uh, to give a vote of thanks, sir. Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. yes sir. Okay, okay. Um, it has been wonderful uh, that I got to know uh, from the from Pujoita and uh, Patriot as well as I late jo joined late basically. We, I had other you know, programs, but um, I must take this opportunity to, you know, congratulate uh, uh, Dr. Patil 
who uh, has given a beautiful lecture on phonology and uh, it, it pedagogical impact, isn't it? Uh, that has been your topic, I believe, uh, English phonology. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So it would have been wonderful. I mean, had we conducted this thing in our, uh, you know, classroom lecture. I mean, uh, every college in our state of Tripura basically needs this sort of, you know, lectures. So it would have been uh, wonderful for the students as well, but whatever we could manage, uh, that is also no small feat. So I spell Tripura, uh, you know, forum would be grateful to you, sir, for your wonderful lecture and hope we'll be meeting very soon in other platform as well. So thank you very much. And thank you, Pujarita. Thank you, Patriot. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Devnath also, who has uh, been the you know, chairperson of this uh, wonderful lecture session. And keep yourself fit and fine. And hopefully, we'll be meeting once again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sain. Uh, thank you, everyone, all the students, research scholars, dignitaries, for your wonderful presence, for being a wonderful uh, host, and for being wonderful listeners. Uh, thank you very much. It's been a wonderful evening. I spell Tripura Forum continues to uh, roll on these kind of lectures, uh, touching different sort of uh, topics. Thank you, everyone, for your wonderful presence. Thank you. Have a good night. Advance. Happy New Year to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you Good night and uh, advance. Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy thank New you. Year to all of you. Happy New Year, sir. Happy thank New you very much.